In this lesson, we're going to learn how to model with linear inequalities. Modeling is the process of writing an equation or inequality that represents a scenario. In this lesson, we will write inequalities that allow us to find values that satisfy the constraints of our situation. With an inequality, we don't use an equal sign, rather we use one of these four symbols. Each symbol has phrases that it's associated with, and it's worth taking a few minutes to familiarize yourself with the various phrases and the symbol that corresponds with it. Let's take a look at our first example. Camden has X nickels and Y dimes. He has at most 20 coins altogether. Write this situation as an inequality that could be used to determine the number of nickels and the number of dimes that he has. This is a problem involving money, and the coins used are the currency in the United States of America. In the United States of America, we have five coins that we use primarily, the penny, the nickel, the dime, the quarter, and the half dollar. Here Camden has X nickels and Y dimes. X and Y represent some quantity. Notice down below you see the word determine. Determine will help you define your variables clearly. We want to determine the number of nickels and the number of dimes that he has. So we will define our variables very specifically. X represents the number of nickels and Y represents the number of dimes. It's important to be specific. Don't just write X is nickels and Y is dimes. Here, X is the number of nickels and Y is the number of dimes. We want to understand the scenario. The scenario is that he has these coins and he has at most 20 coins altogether. So the number of nickels and the number of dimes that he has are at most 20. The number of nickels is represented by X plus the number of dimes is represented by y. Is at most is less than or equal to 20. This is an inequality that represents the number of nickels and dimes that he has, and we've completed our task with writing the inequality. We can of course take this to make some sense of the scenario. If we were to take this inequality and put it into slope-intercept form, and then construct the graph, you would see the shaded area is the solution set. Any point in the shaded region represents pairs of numbers that satisfy the criteria of Camden having at most 20 coins altogether. Some points that we see are the point 2 comma 8. This means that he has 2 nickels, which is the x value, and 8 dimes, which is the y value. We also see the point 12 comma 6. This represents 12 nickels and 6 dimes. Again, he would have, at most, 20 coins. There are many other points that we could pick out of the solution set. For example, 18 comma 1, which would be 18 nickels and 1 dime. It's important to make note that not all points in the solution set will necessarily make sense. For example, here's the point 2.5 comma 7, which means two and a half nickels and seven dimes. It makes no sense to have two and a half nickels, and so this solution is not viable in this situation. So we do have to use common sense when reading off of the graph and choosing values that make sense in the context of our problem. The next exercise is for you to try. Sally and her children went into a bakery and will buy donuts and brownies. She must buy a minimum of 11 donuts and brownies altogether. Write an inequality that would determine the possible values for the number of donuts purchased, x, and the number of brownies purchased, y. Remember, start by defining your variables, x and y. Be specific. Then, understand the scenario and write the inequality. Once you've written the inequality, come back and check your answer. Please pause the video here. Let's see how you did. We want to determine the number of donuts purchased, x, and the number of brownies purchased, y. Determine is the keyword that tells us where to look in the problem to define our variables. We're very specific, x is the number of donuts, and y is the number of brownies. We then understand the scenario. The scenario is that she must buy a minimum of 11 donuts and brownies altogether. 
So the number of donuts that she purchases plus the number of brownies that she purchases is at least 11. Number of donuts is represented by X plus number of brownies is represented by Y is at least greater than or equal to 11. And now we've written our inequality and we're all done. Remember, we can use this inequality to come up with pairs for X and Y that would meet the constraints. If we rewrite the inequality in slope-intercept form, construct the graph, and identify the solution sets, we see that the points in the solution set are the possible combinations of donuts, X, and brownies, Y, that meet our criteria. For example, the point 9,7 is in the solution set. That represents 9 donuts and 7 brownies. If Sally purchases 9 donuts and 7 brownies, she's met the criteria of purchasing a minimum of 11 items. Similarly, the point 14, 3 is in the solution set, which would represent buying 14 donuts and 3 brownies, which once again meets the criteria. In our next examples, we're going to look at problems that involve a total value of something. Our first exercise here will involve the value of money. Stella has X dimes and Y quarters. She has a maximum of $4 worth of coins altogether. Write this situation as an inequality that could be used to determine the number of dimes and the number of quarters that she has. Once again, we're referring to the coins used in the United States of America. She has dimes and quarters, dimes worth 10 cents, and quarters worth 25 cents. We want to determine the number of dimes and the number of quarters. Determine is the keyword that helps us define our variables. So X will represent the number of dimes and Y will represent the number of quarters. Here we are looking for a value. The value of the coins is a maximum of four dollars, which means we need to make note of how much each of the coins is worth. A dime is worth 10 cents each, a quarter is worth 25 cents each. Now we can use this to understand our scenario. The scenario is the value of the dimes plus the value of the quarters is a maximum of $4. How do we determine the value of the money? Well, X represents the number of dimes, but that only tells us how many of them there are. Each dime is worth 10 cents, so we will multiply 10 cents times the number of dimes, and that will tell us how much money our dimes are worth. Now we want to add the value of the quarters. Y represents the number of quarters that we have, but it doesn't tell us how much those quarters are worth. Each quarter is worth 25 cents, so we'll multiply the number of quarters by how much each one is worth. 25 cents times y gives us the total value of the quarters. Is a maximum of, is less than or equal to, and four dollars. This gives us our inequality that represents the number of dimes and the number of quarters that she could have. Now we can use this inequality to understand the scenario even further. If we take our inequality and rewrite it in slope-intercept form, and then construct the graph and identify the solution set, we can see all the pairs of numbers that meet our criteria, a maximum of $4. For example, we see here the point 24,3, which represents 24 dimes and 3 quarters. If Stella has 24 dimes and 3 quarters, that would equal a total of $3.15, which would meet the criteria of having a maximum of four dollars worth of coins. Of course, there are many points within the solution set that would meet her criteria, and we would just have to be careful to reject the solutions that didn't make sense. For example, if you said there should be three and a half quarters or five and a half dimes, it doesn't make sense to have a part of a nickel or a part of a dime. So again, common sense must prevail. The last exercise is for you to try. Madison is working two summer jobs. She earns $9 per hour walking dogs and $18 per hour tutoring. Madison must earn at least $180 this week. 
write an inequality that would represent the possible values for the number of hours walking dogs, x, and the number of hours tutoring, y, that Madison can work in a given week. Remember, begin by identifying your x and y values and defining those variables clearly. Then, understand the scenario and write your inequality. Come back when you're ready to check your answer. Please pause the video here. Let's see how you did. We found the word represent. Represent tells us where we're looking in the problem to define our variables. The number of hours walking dogs is x, and the number of hours tutoring is y. So we will define the variables very specifically, with x being the number of hours walking dogs, and y being the number of hours tutoring. Now we have to look at the scenario. Madison must earn at least $180 this week. This problem is about money, but our variables represent number of hours, so we have to make sure that we can bring things together so that our inequality has to do with money. We know she will earn $9 per hour working by walking dogs and $18 per hour by working tutoring. So we'll make a note of those monetary values next to each statement and then we'll write the scenario. She's going to earn money in two ways. The amount from walking dogs plus the amount from tutoring must be at least $180. X represents the number of hours walking dogs we need that to be an amount of money that she earned. She earns $9 per hour. So nine times the number of hours walking dogs will give her the amount of money from that activity. Plus, there's the amount from tutoring. She spends Y hours tutoring at $18 per hour. $18 times the number of hours tutoring will give us the total amount from that activity. Is at least greater than or equal to 180. And now we have the inequality that represents that situation. As always, we can take that inequality, rewrite it in slope-intercept form, and then construct a graph and identify the solution set. Any point in the solution set is a possible combination of hours that Madison could spend walking dogs and tutoring that meets her criteria of earning a minimum of $180. For example, we have the point 16 comma 6. This represents 16 hours walking dogs and 6 hours tutoring. If she performs this activity, then she will earn at least $180. Similarly, we see here the point 18.5 comma 6.5. It makes sense to have fractional parts of time, so she could work 18 and a half hours walking dogs and six and a half hours tutoring, and again, she would meet her criteria of earning at least $180. This is everything you need to know to get started modeling with linear inequalities. You can learn more about modeling with linear inequalities in Mr. Dory's Algebra Handbook, available at www.dorypublications.com.